Good morning, and welcome to day nine of reading through the Bible in a year. Um, we'll, in 365 days, try to read through the whole Bible. Um, I'm following right now the Adventure Timeline um, by Jeff Cavins. My name is Pastor Jay Lutz. Uh, today we're going to be reading Genesis 18 to 19, Job 7 to 8, and Proverbs 2, 1 to 5. Genesis 18 to 19 uh, is when the Lord appears to Abraham uh, along with three men, and they speak of Sarah, his wife, uh, having a child, and how in exactly a year they will come back and she will have bared a, a child, and Sarah laughs. Then there's this kind of awkward confrontation she has with God. And then after that, Abraham pleads with God over Sodom because God is going to destroy Sodom. Um, Sodom is destroyed anyways uh, because even God could not find ten righteous men or women were not found. Uh, and then we have this awkward thing at the end where Lot, like Noah, uh, falls into sin because... Uh, he loses his wife, and she becomes a pillar of salt. And he gets drunk and sleeps with his two daughters. <laughs> Anyways, it's a, it's a doozy of a story. Anyways, also, Joel continues to his response to Elphaz, the Temanite. And this week, he's re responded to by his other friend, Bildad, the Shudite. And then lastly, Proverbs 2, 1 to 5 talks further about the benefits of wisdom and the fear of the Lord. So, let us begin. Genesis 18. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great tree of Mamre, while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, Have I found favor in your eyes, my Lord? Do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat, so you can be refreshed, and then go on your way, now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent of Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seahs of fine flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in years, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, <laughs> After I'm worn out of and my master is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? And say, Will I really have this child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at an appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I didn't laugh. But he said, Yes, you did laugh. When the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom, and Abraham looked along with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is, is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went towards Sodom. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham 
approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous men in the city? Will you really sweep it away and spare the place for the sake of 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find fifty righteous people in the city of Gomorrah, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of righteous is five less than fifty? Will you destroy the whole city because of the five people? If I find forty-five there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again he spoke to him, What if only forty were found there? He said, For the sake of forty I will not do it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only thirty can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. Abraham said, Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only twenty can be found? He said, For the sake of twenty I will not destroy it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let's speak just once more. What if only ten can be found there? He answered, For the sake of ten I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left, and Abraham returned home. Chapter 19 The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, Please turn aside your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered. We will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, No, my friends, don't be this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do what you like with them. But don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied. And they said, This fellow came here as an alien, and now he wants to play the judge? We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moving forward to break down the door. But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old with blindness, so that they could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, do you have anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we're going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughter. He said, hurry and get out of this place, because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. With the coming dawn, the angel urged Lot, saying, Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will not, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hand of his wife and of his two daughters and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee! For your lives, don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, No, my lords, please. Your servant has found favor in your eyes. And you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me and I'll die. Look, here's a town near enough to run to and it's small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, Very well, I will grant this request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of. 
but flee there quickly, because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why the town was called Zor. By the time Lot reached Zor, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those who living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah, towards all the land of the plain, and he saw dense smoke rising from the land like the smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham, and he brought Lot out of the catastrophe that overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. Lot and his two daughters left Zor and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zor. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. One day, the older daughter said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man around here to live with us, as is the custom all over the earth. Let's get our father to drink wine and then lie with him and preserve our family lying through our father. That night, they got their father to drink wine, and the older daughter went in and lay with him. He was not aware of it when he, she lay down or when she got up. The next day, the older daughter said to the younger, Last night I lay with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight. And you go in and lie with him, so he can preserve our family line through our father. So they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went in and lay with him. Again, he was not aware of it when she lay down and when she got up. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a son, and she named him Ben-Ami. He is the father of the Amorites of today. Our next reading is from Job 7-8. Does not man have hard service on earth? Are not his days like those of a hired man? Like a slave longing for the evening shadows? Or a hired man waiting eagerly for his wages? So I have been allotted months of utility, and nights of misery have been assigned to me. When I lie down, I think, how long before I get up? The night drags on and I toss till dawn. My body is clothed with worms and scabs. My skin is broken and festering. My days are swifter than weaver's shuttle, and they come to an end without hope. Remember, O oh God, that my life is but a breath. My eyes will never see happiness again. The eyes that now sees me will see me no longer. You will look for me, but I will be no more. As a cloud vanishes and is gone, so he who goes down to the grave does not return. He will never come to his house again. His place will know him no more. Therefore, I will not keep silent. I will speak out in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I the sea or the monster of the deep that you put me under guard? When I think my bed will comfort me and my couch will ease my complaint? Even though, then, you frighten me with dreams and terrify me with visions, so that I prefer strangling and death rather than this body of mine, I despise my life. I would not live forever. Let me alone. My days have no meaning. What is man that you make so much of him, that you give him so much attention, that you examine him every morning and test him every moment? Will you never look away from me, or let me alone even for an instant? If I have sinned, what have I done to you, O watcher of men? Why have you made me your target? Have I become a burden to you? Why do you not pardon my offenses and forgive my sins? For I will soon lie down in the dust. You will search for me, but I will be no more. Chapter 8 Then Bildad the Shuite replied, How long will you say such things? Your words are a blustering wind. Does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? 
When your children sinned against him, he gave them over to the penalty of their sins. But if you will look to God and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your righteous place. Your beginnings will seem humble, so prosperous will your future be. Ask the former generations, find out what their fathers learned, for we were born only yesterday and know nothing, and our days on earth are but a shadow. Will they not instruct you and tell you? Will they not bring forth words from their understanding? Can papyrus grow tall where there is no marsh? Can reeds thrive without water while still growing and uncut? They wither more quickly than grass. Such is the destiny of all who forget God. So perish the hope of the godless. What he trusts in is fragile. What he relies on is a spider's web. He leans on his web, but it gives way. He clings to it, but it does not hold. He's like a well-watered plant in the sunshine, spreading its shoots over the garden. It entwines its roots around a pile of rocks and looks for a place amongst the stones. But when it is torn from its spot, that place disowns it and says, I never saw you. Surely its life withers away, and from the soil other plants grow. Surely God does not reject a blameless man or strengthen the hands of evildoers. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Your enemies will be clothed in shame and the tents of the wicked will be no more. Lastly, Proverbs 2, 1 to 5. Chapter 2. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ears to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, and if you call out for insight and cry loud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. These are good words by King Solomon. That if we turn our ears to wisdom and apply them to our hearts, we will find that treasure with God. These are great words of wisdom. We also hear about the wisdom of Job. And how Job speaks of how the hardships that he's going through. And God, God hears his words. Uh, now his friend again, like his other friend, Elpaz, this Bildad the Shuite, replies to him. And again, these friends are not very good with bringing any comfort. Uh, they really, it seems like they're a bit condescending towards him and, and flippant. And uh, that's not a very nice way to, to deal with a friend that's, in such suffering and pain. And they don't know the reason why he's suffering and pain, and yet they still uh, seem to be a little bit uh, self-justified in telling him where to go and how to get there. And also we hear about Genesis. Uh, we hear about Lot uh, and Abraham and Sarah and, and Sarah having this child and this awkward conversation with God about she laughs and then she pretends that she didn't laugh and it's kind of a weird scene. But then we see this with Abraham pleading with God and it just shows the graciousness of God and how God is more than willing to hear uh, his people out. He hears Abraham out and he, uh, he, he goes down to 10 people that might be righteous that he would save. And yet there wasn't 10. And still, on top of that, he saves Lot and anyone that Lot sees as being uh, his friends and family that will go with him. And so he saves Lot and his his uh, wife and two daughters. But sadly, his wife doesn't make it because she looks back. And so he's left with his two daughters. And then we see this weird scene of oh, Jesus. Him and his two daughters, and his two daughters getting him drunk and and conceiving both conceiving children through him. Um, we'll see in the coming weeks how that plays out. But usually things like that don't play well in the Bible. But 
the thing we can concentrate on that story is that God is merciful. He's very merciful. Like he has all the opportunity to just bring fire and brimstone down on this city. And yet he saves Lot and his family. Thanks be to God. May you know the mercy and grace of God this day also. Amen.